Hey everybody, Lord Tremendous here. Got another battle report here for you. It's my second game, I believe, with the Tomb Kings. And uh, I've been talking a lot on the forums and stuff and on the comment section about it. But uh, for the most part, this list has only been slightly changed from my last one. Uh, the next battle report that I do on these guys, the list will be further changed. You know how it goes, it's evolving. But anyway, I got a 2500 point battle here for you. Lord Tremendous of the Tomb Kings now. Versus Death Holy Death. Yes, the same guy, and he's now playing Ogre Kingdoms. He picked up an Ogre Kingdoms army, uh, mostly out of spite. I, I really don't know. But uh, yeah, yeah, so we uh, sat down and we gave this one a shot. I think this was one of his first games with the Ogre Kingdoms, and this was my second game with the Tomb Kings, so I felt like we were on even ground. It was kind of cool. Assemble the army! Here's my list. Uh, as you can see, this is like my second attempt at this list, so things have changed slightly. I still have my Tomb King, Lord Tremendous, with a great weapon, armor of silvered steel, talisman of preservation, and the iron curse icon. This way, he's got strength 7, 2 up, 4 up, and he gives his uh, army a little, or his unit anyway, a little uh, defense in case a stone thrower, or cannon, or bolt thrower, or anything decides to rake through the unit. Not that that's likely to happen, but hey, I had 5 points. Next up is I have my High Lich Priest, Queen Elizabeth. Uh, she's still a level 4 wizard. She's still got the Staff of Sorcery because having that extra plus 1 to dispel makes all the difference. Uh, I gave her the Talisman of Endurance now because I'm starting to think... I, I, I'm starting to think that maybe you guys are right and I shouldn't really give her any protection because if she gets into combat where she's going to need it, she's going to probably explode anyway. And I also gave her the Ruby Ring of Ruin because I wanted her to have a guaranteed uh, magic missile just in case. A fireball is always good. And of course, she's using the Laura Nehekhara, which however you say that word. Next up for my heroes, I have my Tomb Herald, Dark Vincent. Uh, he's still my BSB. I wanted to give it one more shot. I wanted to see if I liked it. He got killed immediately in the last game, so I thought maybe he just didn't have enough to, uh, defense. Maybe I should try, you know, boosting him a little bit. So I gave him uh, these BSB, gave him a shield, and gave him the Armor of Destiny. So now he's got a 4-up, four 4-up. Four so that was, you know, I thought I wanted to try it. I wanted to try it. And last but not least, I have my Necrotech, Sinister Jeffrey. He's got the Sword of Anti-Heroes, the Enchanted Shield, and Opal Amulet. He goes in with the Tomb Guard, and the idea here is he gives him hatred, and if any of my constructs are around the Tomb Guard, uh, you know, within 12 inches of them, they ha now have a 6-up regen, which is always nice. Uh, the core choices that I have are 58 Skeleton Warriors with Light Armor and Full Command. Three chariots with full command and a banner of eternal flame. And I just like having the banner in the army, so I always have flaming attacks at the beginning. You know, you never know when that's going to be useful. And a unit of 13 skeleton archers with full command. That's pretty much just my bunker for the High Lich. My special choices are 27 Tomb Guard with full command and the standard of undying. They're using hand weapons and shields because I'm playing, I'm not playing really a punchy army. I'm playing an army where you come up and, and it just out endurances you. I bring them back, you fall down. That's why the standard of the undying is still in there. And then I have the unit of three stalkers. I'm not even going to try to butcher that word anymore. And uh, they're naked because you can't give them any upgrades. I love this unit though. And then I have my Camarian War Sphinx with Envenom Sting and Fiery Roar. I gave him poison attacks because although he's only strength 5, I like the idea of poison auto wounding. And if, for 10 points you can't go wrong. Fiery Roar, are you kidding me? I, I, I like the Flaming Breath. Uh, my rare choices are my Hero Titan, Nad the Protector. He's named after the individual that gave him his sword, uh, which came up in the Gash model, which is pretty cool. And the Screaming Skull Catapult. I was a little disillusioned with it in the first game, but I decided, you know what, I'm going to give it one more game and see if it does any better. Maybe last game was just a fluke. Here's Death's List, and in true fashion, he has named his characters. He has a, a tyrant, Lord Fattyback of the Fattybeckskins or Sexons, or however you say that big word. He's got a great weapon, a gut maw, a greedy fist, and the other trickster shard. Then he's got a slaughter master, Uncle Ruckus, no relation, who's a level 4 wizard and uses the lore of the great maw. His slaughter master is naked, which is truly orgery, I, I gotta admit. His hero choices are a fire belly, heartburn, with, uh, he was a level 2 wizard with the applicable one up in every list, hell heart, and the lore of fire. And then he's got a bruiser, thunder cheeks with uh, BSB, and he gave him the Rune Maw, because that's an awesome banner. 
His core choices are a unit of 14 Iron Guts. Yeah, he's got the Gut Star. Uh, with full command and a banner of swiftness, because <laughs> movement six for infantry, I guess, just wasn't quick enough for him. Seven. He wants that seven. Uh, his special choices are four Lead Belters with a Musician. Two Saber's Tusks. One is Nya Nya, and the other one is Nya Meow. He's got a Gorger, who's butt naked, because they tend to neglect the Gorgers. And four Mornfang Cavalry with Banner, Musician, and the Dragonhide Banner. Uh, last but not least, of course, is his rare choice, which is his Iron Blaster. Here are my spells, which, since I still don't have the cards, I got two, three, four, and five. And then, of course, I've got Shem's Burning Gaze and Spirit Leech on the Hyro Titan. Here are my opponent's spells, which are there. You want to see them? Pause the video. Here's deployment, and here was my plan. I had no idea what I was going to do against the Gutstar. To be perfectly honest, I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to save enough wounds or to resurrect enough skeletons to really do anything against the Gutstar. So the hope was the uh, Tomb King could kill one of the characters. I didn't know what they were kitted out with. We play closed lists. But uh, just have him take break checks until he breaks was the hope. I really didn't have anything to throw at him. Uh, which showed me there was a rather large problem with this army. So, <laughs> uh, The War Sphinx, he was over there behind the forest, uh, just in case the cannon got froggy. Uh, the idea here was hopefully the Lead Belchers come and play with the Sphinx because I wanted to see what was going to happen there. Uh, the Chariots were there to, def to back up either the Skeleton Warriors or the War Sphinx, I wasn't sure which. The little Eldar Blaster there is my Skull Catapult because I still don't have one yet. Uh, and it was going to either... It was going to go after the uh, Iron Guts. I was just going to try to take out as many of them as I could. Uh, I got my Archer unit over there next to the Skeletons with the Lich Priest in there because I wanted my Lich Priest within 12 inches of my units uh, the best they could so that the spells actually mattered. I got my Hyro Titan in front of them so that nobody can get to the Archers without dealing with the Hyro Titan. And then I've got my Tomb Guard just uh, hanging out on the right end there. And yes, yes, I do realize now that was a huge stupid mistake. The idea was the Tomb Guard were going to deal with the Cannon and the, the Mornfang Cap. Remember, I'm a Warriors of Chaos General for the most part. For two years I've been playing that. It's hard for me to realize that every unit isn't an independent unit. So I made a mistake in deployment here. I realize that. I admit that. I'm sure people are going to put it in the comments section anyway. I agree with you. <laughs> there's there's no reason. There's no reason to argue it. You're right. I should not have deployed like this. But that was the reason I did it. Here's my opponent's right flank, which shows uh, one of his saber tusks. I'm not sure if it's Nyan or Meow Meow. I'm going to just call him Woofy. Uh, on the hill there are his four lead belchers with fire belly installed, and right next to them is the other cat. We're going to call him uh, Scratchy. Here's my opponent's center. Uh, obviously, this is his gut star. He's got his BSB, his tyrant, and his slaughter master in there. So, uh, yeah, there's like four million points tied up in that unit. And here's his left flank, which consists of his Mornfang and his cannon, which uh, both of them really bothered me. Here's my right flank, which consists of my Tomb Guard, which I'm very happy about. And uh, here's my center, which has my Hyro Titan, my Archers with uh, Lich Priest, and my huge unit of Skeletons with Tomb King and BSB installed. And here's my left flank, which has my Chariots, my Catapult, and of course, my Sphinx. Here's top of one after movement, and for the most part, uh, I didn't get to go first, which I'm actually fine with, because it's kind of a waste for me to go first, because... I mean, other than the catapult, nothing is going to be in range. I don't you typically line up on the 12-inch line anymore. So, obviously, the ogres come forward. That's kind of their thing. Uh, the Mornfang actually were a little conservative. They didn't charge right up. The uh, Iron Guts were not conservative. They they fired forward. And the Lead Belchers pretty much did the same thing. They just wanted to... They, they came up uh, the regular movement so they could shoot. Both kitties ran up the best they could in order to probably redirect or get in the way or something like that. But yeah, that's pretty much how he ended up. During his magic phase, he get like spine marrow or tooth cracker or something. I think they got plus one toughness, which was fine. I didn't try to stop because I didn't care. But then when he rolled on the lore attribute chart, he rolled a one and his slaughter messer takes a wound, which really doesn't matter because all he has to do is get one more spell off and it'll be fine. 
during a shooting phase. We screwed this up a little bit. This is our fault. He fires his cannon at my Hyra Titan, and of course, it hits him. It only does one wound, and it should have stopped there. Unfortunately, we were sitting on our shoulders, and we didn't do that. Uh, the cannonball bounced through the Hyra Titan and killed the skeleton archer. Not a big deal are bad. We're going to make a lot of mistakes because we're both getting used to these armies. Even though the cannon rules haven't changed or anything like that, I'm aware of that. We've got so many rules going through our heads and we're still trying to think a turn or two ahead of each other. Believe it or not, I, I do try to give Death good games. It's just, it's hard because he's better than I am at this game. So, what can you do? But yeah, we screwed that up a little bit. So what I like to think is a big chunk of the higher Titan slammed into a skeleton warrior, or a skeleton archer and destroyed it. Don't worry, he'll probably get up later. So we go over to my turn, which is bottom one after movement, and I back up a little bit and kind of do the horseshoe pattern. Uh, mostly, I don't know where that iron gut brick is going. I, I have an idea where it's going, but it still makes me nervous. Uh, the Mornfang, I know they're coming after the Tomb Guard, but I want them to fail a charge. You know, just try to keep them off of me as long as possible. Uh, the Sphinx moves up because I need the Lead Belgers to get closer. And uh, other than that, yeah, that's just pretty much it. I'm just kind of waiting to see what the Ogres do. Nothing happens. My magic phase is abysmal. My uh, shooting phase, of course, deviates a million degrees. I shoot with my skull catapult. It completely misses. I shoot with my archers. They don't do anything. I shoot my chariots. They don't do anything. It's awful. Just awful. So uh, we go over here to top of two. And as you can see, my opponent hasn't moved a whole lot. His Mornfang tried to charge the Tomb Guard and failed. His Iron Guts tried to charge the Skeleton Warriors and failed. His Lead Belchers moved up a little bit to take some pot shots at the Sphinx. Uh, the two cats ran around to probably get a hold of the Skull, uh, the uh, Catapult because, pff, let's face it, it's not doing anything. And uh, his cannon pretty much stayed still because he was going to try to blow stuff up. There's a better picture of the Mornfang refusing to charge the Tomb Guard because they knew they knew they'd have taken him. And there's a better picture of the Iron Guts failing to charge, and that's because um, they like to play with their food? I really don't know. Uh, during his magic phase, his Fire Belly Irresistible forces through a uh, Fireball onto my Chariots and scores one wound. And the resulting miscast 11. No! You must not read from the book! Reduces the fire belly to a level zero wizard. He's not a wizard anymore. Now he's just got indigestion problems and a big heart from hell. So that was kind of nice. One less caster to worry about. During the shooting phase, his cannon decides to explode itself. The resulting shrapnel damage doesn't actually hit anything because everything's far enough away from it that it doesn't matter, but the cannon takes itself out of the game for me, and I thought that was very nice of my opponent. Usually death isn't that giving. He must have been drunk. So we go over here to bottom of two after movement, and I, I think that I did the right thing here. I charged. I know, I know, there's there's veteran Tomb King players out there right now going, oh, you idiot. I know, I know, I'm bad people. But, uh, yeah, I charged with the Skeleton Warriors and the Chariots into the Iron Guts, and both of them made it. The Sphinx charged the cat in front of him because, well, I had to. Uh, the Hyra Titan kind of looks over at the Mornfang because I was worried about them slamming into the Tomb Guard. I figured they'd be okay. Uh, the Skeleton Archers turned to shoot at the cat that, that's way over there uh, once he got in range. I knew my catapult was dead. I just didn't care. Uh, and, of course, my Stalkers popped up. And uh, they landed, they deviated slightly, but they're right in front of the Mornfang. And now they're acting as redirectors and they're dangerous to the Mornfang. So I thought that would be cool. Yeah, I'm going to lose my Stalkers, but if I can hit the flank of the Mornfang with my Tomb Guard, that's huge. I'm going to break them. I'm going to, you know, run them down, hopefully, or at least run them off the table. And, uh, or, you know, I I'm going to try to kill them. I want the points because I know there's a big old chunk of points in that unit and I could really use it. Uh, other than that, everything uh, is pretty much as you see it. During the magic phase, I'm able to get plus one attack off on the Skeleton Warriors, which is great. Uh, he was able to stop the five up ward save, which wasn't as great. But getting plus one attack gives me a little bit more power to try to take out his characters and stuff like that, which is mostly what I'm in combat with. Uh, so, you know, that was something. Then during the shooting phase, the Stalkers do like 18 hits to these guys, and I needed fives to wound because they were only initiative two, and two Mornfang explode, which is just outstanding. 
And then they panic and flee. <laughs> they don't go very far. They only flee like three or four inches. But uh, yeah, they, they start fleeing away from the stalkers, which is probably the smartest thing they've ever done. I like this unit. Uh, I don't see it a whole lot in lists. Uh, I see... You know the 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 other the the knights a lot, but I don't see this unit a lot, and I'm just curious why. I I, I really love that ability that they have, and the fact that Mornfang Cav are now on the way out. That's just outstanding. Uh, during combat, go figure. My Sphinx was able to kill the Saber Tusk. I know, stunning. And uh, I overrun as you can see here, and I've tried to hit the Lead Belchers, but I just didn't have enough umph. So the Lead Belchers are going to get another shot at the Sphinx, but hey, I feel pretty good about what I did. Over here in combat, uh, my Tomb King's 2-up armor, 4-up ward does not help. Uh, he hangs on by one wound, and he was lucky to get that. Uh, most of the wounds that I did, I ended up doing like 10 wounds or something like that. 10 or 12 wounds to the Iron Guts uh, between characters and all that. So it wasn't like terrible or anything, but the it was mostly from the chariots. They ended up doing like 11 impact hits, which was pretty good. And, uh, yeah, the Skeleton Warriors, they took some damage. Not bad, though. Like, I only lost seven, seven Skeleton Warriors. And uh, I ended up winning this combat, but, you know, it didn't matter. They made their break check, which was a little disheartening. So, we go over here to the top of three after movement. And, for the most part, uh, there isn't much. Uh, his, Mornfra his Mornfang continue to flee. They don't rally, which is awesome. And that that's really it. I think uh, his cat charges my uh, catapult, which is fine because it's missed both turns that it shot at anything, and it just kind of dis. I'm not really fond of it, to be perfectly honest. There's a better picture of the skull catapult getting charged by a cat, and I'm sure it's going to crumble. Oh yes, and his gorger pops up on the field and decides to give my uh, hierophant a little bit of a uh, well, a little bit of a fear rush because it's like, oh crap, if this thing gets a hold of me, I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> There's a better picture of where his Mornfang end up when they keep on fleeing, which I was fine with. Get the hell off the table. And, uh, yeah, I mean, one more turn of him failing a panic check, and they're gone, which would have been awesome. During his magic phase, he gets Troll Guts off on his unit. Really didn't want that to happen. I tried my heart out to stop it, and I missed it. The dice just were like, nope, nope, sorry, Death Holy Death gets Troll Guts. You... You have to deal with that. So that's really unfortunate, like extremely unfortunate, because now that they have a four of regen, uh, ugh, and my flaming attacks are damn near gone. Oh well, what can you do? Then over here in uh, shooting, his lead belchers take, I think, two more wounds, two or three more wounds off of the uh, Sphinx, which really sucks. Really don't want to see that guy die yet, because I need him to take the lead belchers out and then get into the combat with the Iron Guts as soon as possible. Uh, over here in combat, yeah, the Saber Tusk is able to destroy the Catapult, no problem, and that's fine. I'm, I'm really, I don't think you're going to see that thing in my list anymore. I'm, I'm just not a huge fan of War Machines, and this is exactly why. They're unreliable. Yeah, you know, one out of three games, you'll see them actually hit something and do something, but for the most part of that, it's 90 points that you could better put somewhere else. Combat over here, oh man. I can't even begin to tell you how many regen saves he made. I only do like three wounds that get through. Uh, but yeah, his regen saves are just amazing. And then he just, yeah, his dice like honed in on my pulse, which is weird because I'm a Tomb King now. But yeah, yeah, his dice found my heat signature and blew me out of the water. Tons of skeletons die. But I've still got about 38 left, so that's not terrible, and I can bring them back, provided that Gorger doesn't come in and ruin everything. But uh, yeah, that's where we're at there. You know, it's not like I'm breaking, thank God. <sighs> I still love the fact that I don't break. Love that. So, we go over here to bottom of three after movement, and, well, I mean, I, I don't know what to do. Uh, with the Mornfang gone, my stalkers charge him, try to get him off the table. They do flee, not, not very far, I, they flee far enough to get away, but they're right at the table edge now, and the stalkers end up going like three or four inches forward, so they're pretty much out of the game now. Uh, the the Hyro Titan realizes, oh crap, 
I need to go and get a hold of his gorger before it bothers my uh, not, lich priest. My lich priest jumps ship out of the friggin' uh, archer unit and ends up right there in the middle of the table. I figured, you know, he can't get a hold of it. I'm going to dispel any magic missile or direct damage spell his slaughter master might have. But other than that, I couldn't let the gorger get a hold of him. That was just too dangerous. The tomb guard, they turn uh, for, you know, they, they, they spin around about you know, their four inch movement and start trying to head over to where the iron guts are because this is where I realized oh wow my deployment was awful my tomb guard probably aren't going to do anything this game and then my sphinx charges into the uh, lead belchers and the idea there is that he kills them there's a better picture of my stalkers trying to escort the mornfang off the table and there's a better picture of the Sphinx slamming into the lead belters to escort them into the next reality. During the magic phase, I'm able to get a 5-up ward save off on my Skeleton Warriors, which made me feel a little bit better. Uh, and I'm also able to put, I think, three more Skeletons back on. So that's awesome. I'm up to 41 now. Uh, 41 models, anyway, in that unit. So I'm feeling good about this. It's like, okay, I can bring him back at least. That's three more he has to deal with again. So... Okay, maybe we can just out-endurance it. Maybe I can just pop the characters and make some points that way. I, I don't really know. Uh, and then during the shooting phase, the archers shoot at the gorger. They're able to slip one wound through, but that's about it. So he's going into him next turn. There's just nothing for it. Over here in combat, I'm able to put a couple of wounds off on the lead belchers because I completely forget to use the flaming breath. I don't know why I forgot about it. I think about that little thing that he can do where he jumps up in the air and does like the template if he hits, worth of hits, and it's just like, oh, cool, but I, I forget. I forget about the flaming breath, so I did not use it against the lead belchers, and I should have. Uh, with charge and two wounds to nothing because they're not able to roll a six to wound me, I do win this combat, but unfortunately they're steadfast and they make their break check no problem. Over here in combat, again, he's making regen saves more than he should. Way more than he should. Uh, he pops my Tomb King, which was inevitable. Uh, my Herald is long gone. It was probably one of the first things he killed. Uh, unit Champion is a corpse. It's it's all bad. It's all bad. I'm, I'm down to 22 Skeleton Warriors. No characters. Not even a Unit Champion. They have one more round of combat in them, and they're gone. So that's unfortunate. But you know what? They... they charged and did the best they could against an iron death star uh brick with a tyrant a bruiser and a slaughter master installed uh, and a fire belly eventually so you know what i'm not going to complain too much there are very few things that can that can slam into an iron gut brick and do any damage and the only reason there's not more dead iron guts is because he got that damn troll gut spell off so you know what i'm not upset i i know what i did wrong here i know you know that this is a damn tough unit to break so it's not surprising. So we go over here to top of four after movement. And yeah, the Gorger goes into the Archers. The Mornfang Rally, which sucks. <laughs> and uh, other than that, I think his Saber Tusk charges the back of my War Sphinx. That's it. Yep, there's a better picture of the kitty slamming into the back of the Sphinx. I don't know why. Uh, I think he was hoping for charge and rear, but uh, I don't know. I, I just thought that was kind of fun because I was just going to thunder stomp the damn thing to death. There's a better picture of the Gorger slamming into the archers, and yeah, they're dead. And there's a better picture of the Mornfang playing with my emotions. They actually rallied. They turned around to face the stalkers, which was poop. During his magic phase, he gets that spine marrow off or whatever it is on his uh, lead belters, which I think increases their toughness by one. whoop de doo uh, We go into combat, and I remember to use my flaming breath, and I think I do like 11, uh, you know, 11 hits, and obviously all but two uh, lead belters die. Uh, one is carrying two wounds. I thunder stop the cat out of existence. I take one more wound, but that's it. And then when the lead belchers break, I'm able to run them down. So my kitty beat out his kitty and a bunch of lead belchers. So yeah, really liking the Sphinx a lot. <laughs> that thing is something else right there. Really enjoying him. Uh, over here in combat, the Gorger is able to destroy most of the unit. Like, there's four archers left. That's about it. But yeah, he's, uh, in the end, like, eight archers die. But they're not gone, so he's stuck there for another turn, which means the Hyrotitan's coming in. So, you know, that's something, at least. 
And then a comet over here, the rest of the skeletons just vaporize, which really sucks, but it's an iron gut brick. You know, I did pretty good against it. I think I killed five or six of them, so... You know, that that's not bad, all things considered. And with his regen up, and... No, I know what you're thinking. Didn't your chariots do anything? No, the chariots were destroyed... Or, the chariots weren't able to wound anything. And, uh, yeah, that, that was really too bad. But, you know, I'm not complaining. It was a fun battle, to say the least. So, we go to bottom of four after movement, and, yeah. The Sphinx runs up to, just in case the Mornfang try to run her over and do anything, I figured if I could get the Sphinx into the flank, because I figured he was going after the uh, the Stalkers with the Mornfang. But, uh, the Sphinx runs up to uh, try to countercharge the Mornfang, if it comes right down to it. The Tomb Guard move over to try to give the Iron Guts a little pause, maybe. And, of course, the Hyrule Titan slams into the Gorger to try to save that unit. Meanwhile, my Lich Priest moves four inches away from the Iron Guts because I do not... If they charge him, he's dead. There's... Yeah. Even if they miss completely, the Hyrule Titan's dead. Or the uh, Hierophant, sorry. Uh, there's a better picture of the Hyrule Titan slamming into the Gorger because it's gotta die. And then during the Magic Phase, really because I'm out of options... Uh, Queen Elizabeth is able to get plus one attack and a five award save off on the archers. So I'm hoping the Gorger will be dead by next turn. Oh, and it wasn't meant to be. So yeah, we go into combat and as you can see, the Gorger only gets one more wound put on him because rolling dice is hard. Uh, he's unbreakable, so he doesn't go anywhere. But yeah, he's only got one wound left, but he's still there and that's really bad. So we go to top of five after movement, and as you can see, the Iron Gods did try to charge my uh, Lich Priest and failed, thank god. The Mornfang do not take the bait of the Stalkers and turn to face the Sphinx, which is bad because if they charge him, he's dead. <laughs> so I was just going to back him up after that. Now that the Mornfang are there, there's really nothing I can do about it. I should have sent the Snakes up towards him to try to do more damage to him with shooting, but there was just no way to do it. It's not like they're fast cav. Uh, but anyway, everything else that he has is dead or in combat, so. Here's a better picture of the Iron Guts failing another charge. That's two this game, which I feel pretty solid about. During his magic phase, he gets a buttload of magic spells off on his Iron Guts. I, I just didn't care. I stopped the ones that I was worried about, but for the most part, yeah, he gets his spells off, and now that unit's just as dangerous as it was before. During the combat phase, uh, I'm able to kill the Gorger, finally, even though he does get one more skeleton. I don't care. <laughs> it's like, oh god, get the Gorger out of here so I can run. And then we go into bottom of five after movement, and I, I'm, I'm in panic mode. I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. The Sphinx sits in the back in the rear of the Iron Guts, hoping to deter them, maybe. I move him away from the Mornfang, so that if the Mornfang do charge, he's got to roll boxcars to hit him. Everything surrounded the Iron Guts, worried about where they're going to go. That's it. Uh, I do a terrible, terrible um, placement of my Tomb Guard for against the Iron Guts. I, I don't know what I was thinking about. Uh, again, I was sitting on my shoulders for most of this game, uh, especially during you know the movement phases. So yeah, I should have angled my Tomb Guard much differently, but I didn't, and that's on me. Other than that, I was trying to angle... Uh, everything else to just keep it away from the Hierophant. I knew the archers were screwed. I couldn't move the Hierophant any farther than four inches. I didn't have the extra movement spell, which I'm starting to see why it would be important. So, you know, I'm learning. I'm learning. But yeah, that's where everything is, and that's where the hope is. Uh, nothing happens. My magic phase is easily dispelled. It doesn't help at all. Uh, the opponent, and we, so we just go over the top of six. And the Mornfang come barreling up to the War Sphinx, just, I don't know why. Not even Death knew. He was just like, I'm just going to move him here because I like him here better. Okay. Uh, the Iron got slammed into the Archers, and here's where I realized they're going to obliterate the Archers and then overrun into the Hierophant and get her. There's, there's just nothing I can do. Uh, I also realized that my Tomb Guard are terribly positioned here, and it's like, ah, oh, I'm an idiot. So it's looking like my Tomb Guard are going to spend all six turns of this game just kind of looking around, not doing anything, which is awful. And uh, yeah, other than that, everything he has is dead or in combat. There's a better picture of his Iron Guts slamming into my archers, which is ouch. And then he gets that Spine Marrow off on his unit again, and I have no idea why he did that. It was like the archers were going to get an attack. So, uh, yep, yeah, in the combat phase, he obliterates the skeletons and overruns into the uh, Lich Priest. No problem, and this is my nightmare, so eh, what can you do? 
So we go to bottom of six after movement, and the Lich, uh, I'm sorry, the Hyro Titan slams into the Iron Guts into flying. Why, you might ask? Why not? It was fun. <laughs> I slammed him in there, and I was like, you know what? I'm not going to be able to do anything. Uh, I'm not going to really be able to hurt anything. It's bottom of six. Maybe I can have some fun. Maybe he'll flub really, really bad, and the charge in the flank maybe, maybe, maybe. Uh, you know, it's it's just that, hey, you don't know until you try. Other than that, nothing that I had could get anywhere. The snakes couldn't move close enough to do their shooty attack at the uh, Mornfang. The Tomb Guard were not angled in such a way that they could charge the flank of the Iron Guts, which sucked, and that's completely my fault. And the Sphinx would have needed uh, 14, I think, to hit them, and that would have been cheating. So, what can you do? There's a better picture of the Hyro Titan slamming into the flank of the Iron Guts because he's trying to protect his uh, his, his Lich Priest. You know, what could he do? During the magic phase, uh, the Lich Priest, she tries to get uh, the 5 board save off on, what's it called? Uh, Hyro Titan. And uh, Irresistible Force it. And it's miscast 11. No! You must not read from the book! Gotta be perfectly honest with you, I would really have preferred it to be miscast 10 and blow herself up into the warp, taking a bunch of strength hits onto the Iron Guts before she left, and then, and then all he had was that flanked, uh, what's it called, Hyro Titan there with a 5-up ward save, so. Oh well, it would have been better, but it didn't happen. On a positive note, though, the Hyro Titan, as you can see here, got a 5-up ward save, so yay! Uh, combat happens, and yeah, the Lich Priest gets her head just caved into its baser elements. And uh, while they're not able to do anything to the Hyro Titan, uh, he still loses this combat and takes two more wounds because I think I lost by three. Uh, the Hyro Titan isn't dead yet, but ugh, that sucked. Uh, once the Hyro Titan died, I did break checks, or crumble checks for everything, and the only thing that uh, lost any wounds was a couple of Tomb Guard died. That was the only action they saw this game, so hey, at least you can say they were in it to win it. And that's it, guys. That's the end of the game. That's how it ended. I know, I know, I made a lot of tactical and, and new mistakes when it came to playing these guys, but Damn if I didn't have fun. I mean, even when I realized my huge, stupid, glaring mistakes and stuff, I was like, eh, you know what, this is still a blast. And considering I had to deal with an Iron Gut Death Star with three characters installed, four when the uh, Firebelly finally joined, it was uh, not too bad. I still have a decent amount of stuff on the table, but uh, he, he still has more. My Unfortunately, he got a hold of my meat, which was my Tomb King, my Herald BSB, and my Skeleton Brick. Uh, he also dealt with the Skull Catapult, and uh, that, that really hurt my feelings a lot. You know, the Chariots got blown away. But, uh, you know, we'll get to the recap in a minute, because right now it's time for a quick timeout. Hey guys, I know I've already talked to you about this before, but you should really check these pictures out because they were all painted, including my model, by Unleashed Wargaming. And uh, they have their email right up there at the top of the page, and they've also got it down there. Uh, they got a YouTube channel. He's working on a website. It's not quite ready yet, but yeah, really, if you get a chance, check these guys out. If you're looking for someone to paint your stuff real good, seriously check these guys out go to his uh, send him an email check out his youtube page it's really worth your time it's a phenomenal job it, it you know it's quick it's painless you don't have to worry about painting your stuff and uh, soon i'll be running a model uh that these guys painted for me and i'm very excited about that but check out these pictures give this guy an email check him out on youtube get your models painted by him if you can it's totally worth it and tell him tremendous sent you <laughs> In the end, it ended up being a defeat for Lord Tremendous. Uh, I was undefeated until this game. But uh, yeah, it was 782 me to 1706 him. I ended up losing my Tomb King, my High Lich Priest, my Herald, my Skeleton Wars, my Archers, my Chariots, uh, my War Sphinx. No, I'm sorry, I kept the War Sphinx. And uh, the Catapult, that's what I lost. Uh, he ended up losing the Iron Blaster, the Lead Belchers, and two Saber Tusks. Uh, damn, but I tried, though. You know, I just had no answer for that gut star. And that really made me start to think. It's like, wow, what am I going to do if I run into something like that similar? 
Uh, the Tomb Guard never saw combat either, which was completely my fault. That was piss poor deployment, piss poor positioning. Just my once those Mornfang broke, the Tomb King should or Tomb Guard should have been moving. I should have uh, swift reformed them and and got them right as close into those Iron Guts as I possibly could, so that I could counter charge once they destroyed my Skeleton Warriors. Really stupid on my part. But, eh, what can you do? I, I blame myself. The regen on the ogres is what killed my momentum. I was actually putting a decent amount of wounds on him, but when he got troll guts off and he was making those four ups, I was just, there was nothing I could do. There was nothing I could do. Uh, I wish the chariots had hit and wounded. I really, really did, but uh, it, it wasn't meant to be, so what can you do? The Stalkers did amazing against the Mornfang. I never should have stopped going after the Mornfang after they were fleeing, but they ran really, really far, and the Stalkers weren't that close, and I was afraid if they got too close, they would charge them, and with the impact hits and all their craziness that they could do, the Stalkers were just not going to be any real match for them. Uh, if I could have charged the Stalkers into them, that would have been different, but eh, it just wasn't meant to be. Uh, again, just a mistake on my part. Maybe I shouldn't have charged them uh, when I did. I should have maybe just moved up seven inches and then, you know, looked at him again and tried to kill him that way. But again, I'm still learning. It, it was a stupid rookie mistake, and I hope I don't make it again. I probably will, but I hope I don't. Uh, still got a lot to learn, obviously, about the Tomb Kings, but honestly, this, this army is just way too much fun. And the fact that I don't have to take break checks, oh, I almost don't even care if I win combat anymore. As long as I'm killing your models, I'm, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I absolutely love it. But this was another great game, great opponent. It was great to see Death play something other than Dark Elves. Uh, it was it was cool, too, to see how he took his, his first take on the uh, uh, Ogres, too, so that was really cool. But uh, really looking forward to the rematch, not only because I enjoy playing Death, but because I'm really enjoying playing Tomb Kings, which I never thought I'd say. But yeah, guys, that's going to do it for Battle Report 143, my second ever Battle Report where I'm playing the Tomb Kings, and I don't know why I haven't been playing these guys all along. I really don't. I'm enjoying the hell out of this. <laughs> Uh, as always, feel free to put any questions, comments, concerns, or complaints you uh, have in the comment section below, and I will get back to you as quick as I can. But as always, guys, thanks!